Unfortunately, we often don't allow the whole person to be engaged with God. We, we either limit the areas, whether it's heart, mind, soul, and strength, or whether it's the intellect and the emotions and the physical and the spiritual. We, we pick one. In, in our culture, it's usually the head. If we know a lot, if we learn a lot, then, then we're, we're there. We're making it. But we've left three pieces out. Or some of you, it's emotions, if I feel. I mean, we've got churches all over the country that people come together to feel good, not to learn. And then we have churches that they come and say, you you're preach the book, pastor. Now I know. Neither of them are wrong. All of them are necessary. We need to be able to grow as whole people using all of the dynamics of our life. And generally, we starve one and feed another. We get preoccupied in our life and we don't allow the very disciplines of our life to capture our spiritual walk. We find ourselves, as I said, frenetic and chaotic, preoccupied with stuff. We, we find ourselves so erratic and compulsive that, that our life is controlled by the things in it and around it. We find ourselves so stuck on me that God has to pound on the door to find a place to get in. We find ourselves cluttered with our agenda, not his. We are multifaceted, and we should allow the wholeness of our nature, connected with the disciplines that the church has followed for many years but ignored over the last century, really, so that we can meet God at a much more challenging level. Now, the disciplines, what are they? And they, there's books about them. There's numbers of different ones. I would give you just a, a list to begin to think what we're going to talk about over the next four or five weeks. Dallas Willard uses these. There's uh, uh, Richard Forster uses another set. You can look at another group and they lose. But the concept, they're all about there. And, and I give you these. He talks of some things that we'll abstain from or be quiet about. And he, he shares solitude as a discipline, silence, fasting, frugality, chastity, secrecy, sacrifice. Some things will be engaged in study, worship, celebration, service, prayer, fellowship, confession, submission. You see, there are disciplines, not going to the gym. There, there are disciplines to grow deeper in our walk with God. The difficulty is that they, they fit in that heart, mind, soul, will, or emotion, intellect, and, 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 and physical, but we get hyper-stimulated in those disciplines with the wrong things. And so where we're supposed to use them as a means of growing deeper in our relationship with God, we have gotten preoccupied using them in something else. Well, let's take the the person in the physical realm. We can get safe there. And you're a health nut. And you show up at the gym. You know, I see these cars in the parking lot at the YMCA when I come to work, and I can't believe the number of cars that are there early, early, early in the morning, every morning. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you replace that discipline of physical exercise with what God wants you to do, Replace, mind you now, I said. And that's often what happens. If I'm getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym, I do my thing, I get all exercise, I come home, I get all dressed up, and biz, I'm off to work. What happened to my quiet time with God? Where did it go? Maybe I can snatch it someplace else. Oftentimes everything else gets snatched. Well, maybe it's not just a physical exercise. It can be other things as well. It can be food. I, I, I can get caught in that caring for myself, you know, and I, I make that a discipline that maybe I do well at it or not well at it, but I'm more attentive to that. And, and the point is that all of the disciplines can get caught in the realm of the world 
and we lose the focus on what it is that God wants us to do. Emotions. I can say, you know, relationships are very important, and they are. I have no problem with that. But when relationships become the primary thing that you thrive on, you you know, you can never spend a moment alone. You can never be off the telephone. You never can be out of somebody's living room or whatever it may be. It has now become hyper-stimulated, and you just need more and more and more and more and more. Because when I feed it, I keep wanting more. When I feed it, I keep wanting more. And now what was supposed to be something that drew me to be quiet and find the presence of God, it has now consumed me and it preoccupies who I am and where I go. Three little verses that God challenged me with, and I, I suggest them that... To, that the stimulation needs to come in the right order. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, he says, I discipline my body that I make it my slave. I'm afraid sometimes in the disciplines you've allowed yourself to become the slave to it. Paul goes on to say in uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, I take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know, in the world in which we live, I wonder if, in fact, you try even to do that. You are flooded with so many thoughts in the period of a day, whether it's what you watch or what you listen to or what's going on at work or when you get home and read or the news or whatever it may be. Do you take every thought captive? Are you disciplined enough to begin to say, God, I am a limited kind of a person. I've got just so much intellect. I can, I can take in just so many things, so I need to judge what's worth taking in. And I take every thought captive. I, I, I don't. I, I'm sorry to admit, I, I turn the news on. And if I had the wisdom, I'd turn the news off. My thoughts just get overwhelmed with this and that and the next thing. And and there are many places where my mind doesn't stop and say, God, do you want this here? I need to discipline. And, And as we look at the disciplines, there are places where those things fit so that God finds the time and the place to communicate to us. Philippians 3 and 10, as he talks about the whole emotional dynamic, that I might know the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. You see, God has shaped us in such a way that if we choose to bring a discipline into our life that we find him rather than filling our life with just stuff. I believe that Pascal's statement, there's a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every man and it can only be filled by God, is a wonderful picture of this. You see, there is a vacuum there, and God and God alone will fill that vacuum in numerous different ways. In the intellectual, with the emotional, with the spiritual, with the physical, with the social. God wants us to be involved at every level. That is why oftentimes we don't find healthy, whole, full Christianity, because we've tried to affect a living Christianity on one cylinder. It's either full here and empty here. And the reality is there's a balance, and that's where the disciplines come in. We don't do them all at once, but we learn to practice certain things so that we can become more capable of receiving and relating to the God of glory. We do ourselves a disservice when we try to keep a relationship with God based upon just what we know or just what we feel or or just what we've been doing. Every one of the disciplines are critical. Let me read you some verses that expose that in, in just picked statements out of the Scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29, 2. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mark 12 and 30. Discipline yourself for godliness. 1 Timothy 4 and 7. Take captive every thought. 
2 Corinthians 10, 5, present your bodies as living sacrifices, Romans 12, 1. Cast off all encumbrances, Hebrews 12, 1. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart, 1 Peter 3 and 15. Prepare your minds for action, 1 Peter 1 and 13. In contrast to the average life that we live today, we need to change. 